Hey guys, it's Ryan with Sawdust and Stuff, and today is the day, one year, since I picked up the Thunder Laser Nova 51 100 watt, and uh, I wanted to put together a little review video of just what I think about the machine now that I've had it for a year. Um, some of the good, some of the bad, how'd it work out? But here's the trick. I have intentionally avoided all maintenance on this machine for one whole year. So what that means is if you're a scrub like me, this is my first laser, if you're like me and have no idea what to do, forget to do the maintenance, mess up, don't trust the machine, whatever, this is what your machine will look like after about a year. The Nova 51 100 watt laser is, it's a pretty affordable machine for the size. The machine behind me costed $12,000 $200 and then on top of that you've got any accessories so if you need any electric run any exhaust run if you need any outlets changed out um, but on top of that the machine accessories themselves so if you go with some sort of a rotary like a roto boss something like that you're looking at a little extra cost so I went with the the Nova 51 here um, and I also ordered the roto boss rotary which I believe was about $1,500 so somewhere around $14,000 once you factor tax and freight and all that good stuff um, is what you're looking at for this machine. Now that sounds like a ton of money, um, and it is, it's a lot of money, but when you're running a business, you want to invest in quality and you want to invest in efficiency. And that's two of the things this machine behind me that I think it has. Um, what I want to do now is I want to flip the page and I want to start looking at different features or things with this machine, pull it out, show you what it looks like after a whole year of never even so much as emptying out the drawers with all the crumbs on the bottom. So let's take a look and see step by step some of the things that this machine's got going on. So we're starting over here and right behind me is the water chiller. It's underneath the box for the Roto Boss, which is actually the way that I store that rotary continually. I put it right on the water chiller, right in the box. And um, this water chiller, I've never filled it up. I never swapped it for RV antifreeze, anything like that. It's just the, the chiller as it was. Um, and as you can see, it's external to the machine. So as you factor in your size, your footprint, this machine is big and you're gonna need to factor in room for the water chiller. I wish they would have come up with a solution or a way to tuck that back a little bit easier. If I were to pull the machine out, the, the tubes and the cords um, are a little bit too short. You waste a little too much space with it back, it tucked in the back. So I set it right on the side. It's a bummer, it creates this dead space here and that's a little bit of a critique I've got. Now, as you can see, this is the laser bed and you can see where I use it, right? This is where it's used most. And then as you get to the edges and even this front left corner over here, you'll see that it's not really too used. And that's fine. I prefer here. And the reason I prefer this spot is because if you look behind me here, you'll see the control panel. It's on the front right of the machine. Now I bring that up. I love the location of this because next to the control panel is where I keep my computer. And your computer, this is usually tucked a little bit closer here, and it connects via cord, which is very convenient for me. It keeps it tucked in a corner, and where you lose dead space on the other side, you actually gain some of that space back here. Now I'm getting pretty nitpicky with some of these reviews, but one of the things that I don't love about this laser, or that I wish it had, it's kind of twofold. First, I wish that there was some sort of a measuring guide along the outside of this laser area. Um, there's not really a good way to level your material on here. And if out of all the critiques, that's the critique I have most is it's really hard to make sure your material is level because you're looking at the honeycomb here. And I just don't quite trust that because if you look at this, this honeycomb moves, right? And, and heck, I can just pull the whole thing off to clean it. I've never done that, but you can do that. And what that means is that there's play. And so anytime you're looking for level, it's just hard to trust. So the way that I've addressed that is I've actually got this framing square and this framing square lives on this bed. I push it right up against it here on the right side and then you can see it's got leveled here. And as I just said, it's not perfect. It actually looks like currently how it is, again, lined up with the bed is about a millimeter, maybe two millimeters off centered here, or I'm sorry, off level. So the material kind of slips a little bit, but it's the best way that I've found to keep the material level. And for the work that I'm doing where it's not super dependent on the being level, this tends to hold up pretty well. Anytime I do a sheet of material, I actually give myself a quarter to a half inch along the entire outside of just dead space um, to cover this uh, situation. Now let's look at one of my favorite features that everyone else talks about. I've not really utilized it because I've never emptied it, but 
Uh, the front panel here um, on this Thunder Laser, it has two locks and it comes with the provided keys, a lock here, a lock over there. I leave this lock open all the time. This lock over here is where I keep the keys and that way it's not something I lose. I'm not worried about safety or anything like that. But when you open up the lock and you slide this down, what you've got is actually two trays of crumbs, right? Two trays of all the material that you've ever allowed to come out that honeycomb just fit right in here. And the reason that I think this is such a good feature is because what I can do is just take a vacuum and vacuum all this up. And I've never tried it, but I'm curious. They do actually pull right out of there. So I think that's such a brilliant, you can see a, a rag and a square and everything. I think that's such a brilliant design. It's even got handles on the side there. I just think it's a brilliant design to be able to allow yourself to clean the laser without having to go and climb in underneath that tray. Because one of the things you'll see, the laser, the Z clearance on this laser goes all the way down right next to those trays. So you can't really climb in there super easily all the time, but having these trays that pull out just creates a nice solution to get rid of all of it. Having the door here makes it so you'll never even know that your trays are full. Now the same way that there's locks on this front tray, uh, those locks exist everywhere. And I think that's really convenient because if you're ever doing a pass through, you can unlock this panel right here. If you need to look in the laser tube, you just unlock, open the panel right there. Every part of this laser is so easy to access no matter what you need um, because of the way they've designed it. And I think that's just a fantastic design. The air assist on this laser is pretty convenient. The, so on the front right is this control panel behind me here. On the front left is where you control the air. It's got these little, uh, you use a screwdriver, you twist the knobs to adjust slightly, you green power buttons obviously. And I just think it's nice to have that access on the front rather than being tucked away elsewhere. You can see here this laser's got a lot of surface area. Um, it, it technically is dead space, but I actually keep a lot of materials on there. I clean them off for the video, but I keep a thing of microfiber towels that just lives right here. Um, I keep a little dental pick here to poke out anything that I've cut that's got small areas. I just use that to poke out those things, along with any tumblers that are on deck, things like that. One of the things that was really hard for me on this laser for about the first six months was the safety mechanism that meant, um, well, let's talk about it this way. This light in the back here is red light, green light. Green means it's off, red means the laser is on. And when I was in the laser for the first six months, when I was using the laser, you couldn't have the laser running while the door was open. There's a sensor. You can view that as a plus, but I viewed it as a minus because I always wanted the door open. I wanted to be filming different stuff I was doing or just accessing if the laser's in the back, I wanted to be whatever. I wanted it open. So that was a bummer for me for the first six or so months, but I, I then realized that there's actually a setting in light burn where you can disable that. And ever since then, the access, this big door, is such a huge perk for me to access because you get all the room to put the material in a line and do whatever you want. Um, and if you do want to film things, it's really easy to get good footage in here, even though these windows get dirty, as you can see, all that good stuff. Um, you can just open it up, prop it open a little bit if you want, whatever. Um, you just get some really good footage. One of the things in this laser that really drew me to Thunder Laser was their ability to autofocus. And to be honest, that's something I'm a little bit uh, disappointed in, the quality of the autofocus on here. So let me tell you how it works. So on each side of the laser bed, you've got one of these infrared, I believe, sensors. And there's one on this side and there's one on the other side of the laser. And when you hit autofocus on the control panel, the, the bed raises up until these sensors are interrupted by something. It could be your material, it could be a clamp, it could be whatever. The reason it was a little disappointing for me is because those have no way to, communication, to communicate with the actual laser head. So even though you can hit a button to autofocus, what ends up happening is you actually have to go in here, you've got this little thumb screw, you undo that, and you actually have to manually raise and lower the head of the laser here uh, to accommodate the, the lack of 100% full autofocus with those autofocus sensors. Now this is such a little deal, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's really easy to focus these because they give you piece of material that look like this, just thicknesses that you autofocus to and kind of fine tune. But for me, I'd much rather have this full autofocus and save me the, the five seconds every cut. Um, and I was a little disappointed there. That being said, 
even though it doesn't have the 100 autofocus, whatever, uh, it still has such an easy access, such an easy autofocus that it really is a perk for me. Um, it's very easy to set this to the exact focus you want. And the reason that's important and why it's, it's something I've learned to love is because every project you do could use a different focus a little bit better. On top, some projects you do, you want six millimeter focus and others you only want two. If you're cutting thicker material, you probably wanna focus on the bottom of the material. Things like that come into play. On top of that, because of how easy this is to just remove the laser head, if I wanted to swap out and use a, a different size lens, a wide angle lens, a four inch lens, whatever, that's how hard it is, I just do that. I just go ahead, put it back in here, use the thumb screw and bam, the new laser head is already installed. So I've come to love that about this machine, but at first that was a bummer because I didn't know what I was doing. I was a little frustrated there. Now the last thing I'm gonna be a little bit picky about on this machine um, was the quality of the actual lens that came inside of here. And the reason I'm picky about that, because I didn't clean it for the longest time, you can see in here how that yellowish lens in the middle there, it's perfectly clean. When I first cleaned this, it was pretty dirty. I had just gone ahead and uh, laser engraved some hockey pucks that were rubber. And what happened is this got way fogged up. So I took out the cleaner, utilized that. And before I knew it, my entire laser lens was ruined. It had some sort of a film on it that started peeling off and it was useless. I had to order a new lens. That was pretty annoying to me. I'd expect the best laser uh, lens to come with the machine. What I learned was that's not accurate. It actually, there's some other brands that do better um, that are produced differently. Um, and so I, I think that was a little bit frustrating to me, but again, for it was a $20 replacement lens. I keep one on hand now, no big deal. So there's a few last things I wanna review or just talk through my experience with this laser uh, before I jump off of here and, and get back to work. The first thing I wanna talk about is the alignment. One of the things that scared me away from lasers before I bought one was the alignment of the mirrors and making sure everyone was fine tuned exactly how you needed it to be. Um, I was incredibly happy to know that after my laser was shipped overseas into the Thunder Laser facility and then shipped back up to me, put on a tow truck, lowered down into my garage, uncrated, brought in here, hooked up, that all of the lasers were still perfectly aligned. And in fact, I've never had to realign the, the laser or the, the mirrors. They've all been perfect. And for me, I've heard nightmare experiences about other lasers and what they've got and what was aligned and wasn't aligned when it showed up or how much of a nightmare they've had. Um, that wasn't my experience. My experience was everything was ready to go as soon as I had it installed. And that just means so much to me, a new customer, um, and also someone without a lot of experience who was jumping off the deep end into the laser engraver world, that they were already aligned, ready to go, super user friendly, super newbie friendly. And uh, to me, that just goes a long ways. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is the customer service that I received from Thunder. Um, as any machine, any robot, any computer, um, you're gonna hit some glitches along the way. Now, most of the glitches that I've experienced have actually been uh, my own fault, where I didn't understand something, or I had something hooked up wrong, or I didn't have the right outlet to, to run my machine, those types of things. But every once in a while, you might come into something that you just don't quite understand what's going on. For me, the biggest experience with this was the, the lens uh, not working and not giving me as powerful cuts as needed to be. Um, and what I, what I found is when I reached out to Thunder, I reached out to their support, and whether it was work hours or not, weekend or weekday, didn't really matter. I got a response quickly from the customer support team, giving me at minimum a link to a video or an article that would solve my problem or that they thought would solve my problem. If that didn't work, they were quick to respond and they were just very good at communicating with me, letting me know I'm not alone. They understand what's going on and they're gonna do whatever they can to uh, get back on track or get my machine back on track and ready to go. On top of the, the formal professional customer support that they offer, there's also a community on Facebook. It was one of the reasons I actually went with a Thunder Laser uh, was the community on Facebook that when I had some of these questions and I, I knew I was midnight or whatever, I could just post in this Facebook group and there's tons of people who are willing to help out when you have something in need. 
They're willing to do whatever it takes. They're willing to go to bat for you, let you know what they've experienced, all of those things just because they care and they want you to succeed. Community over competition is something I strongly believe in. Um, and what I've experienced from the Thunder Laser community, and this is not true of all laser communities, but the Thunder Laser community has done nothing but be a community and not competition and help each other get to where we need to be.